The video was prepared specifically for the channel, about Kakasayan. Greetings, friends. In this video, I want to propose what I believe is an interesting scheme for a simple generator of rectangular and sinusoidal signals, based on Arduino Nano with a built-in frequency meter. We'll talk about generation in general, assemble everything, and test it on a breadboard. The idea for this video came about while thinking of a scheme for the simplest and most accessible generator. That can be quickly assembled from what you have in your home lab, to debug various circuits. I would be happy to hear your ideas and suggestions in the comments. But let's start from the very beginning. A generator is an electronic device capable of producing a signal of a specified shape with a certain frequency and amplitude. Classic signal shapes include harmonic or sinusoidal signals, square waves, triangular waves, sawtooth waves, noise, with a specified bandwidth, and delta pulses, which are short pulses. There are also more complex signal shapes used in specialized applications. But from my point of view, the main ones are the square wave and the sine wave. Now let's take a look at the Arduino Nano. This board is based on the AVR, at Mega 328P microcontroller, which has a lot of interesting features on board, but lacks a digital to analog converter. Therefore, all the existing generators that I have been able to find so far operate, either on the principle of DDS signal generation using some external circuitry, or through PWM signal filtering. The Atmega has timers that can generate a PWM signal. The duty cycle of the PWM signal can be quickly changed, according to complex rules. You put a filter and get a signal. Within a certain frequency range, this will work fine, but personally, I'm not very fond of this method. When it comes to DDS generator variants, in most cases they are built on an R2 R resistor matrix, which forms a digital-to-analog converter. In the memory of microcontrollers, there is a table of sine values. We output them and get a sine wave of a certain frequency. If we want to increase the frequency, we start outputting these values faster. If we want it slower, we increase the delay. The more samples we can store in memory, the better the sine wave will be. Well, more advanced projects use specialized generator chips as a basis, where you input the necessary settings, and everything works smoothly. It's a great option, no doubt about it, but I want to create a simple and highly accessible project that can realistically be assembled from what everyone has. That's why I turned my attention to a circuit from the textbook, The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill. It suggests generating a sine wave using a shift register and seven resistors. The last output of the shift register is inverted and fed back to the input. As a result, over 16 cycles, all the outputs of the register will first be filled with ones and then with zeros. And at the output, we get this kind of set sine wave. Add a little capacitor and voila. The sine wave is achieved through carefully selected resistances. The resistance values can be calculated using the following formulas. In this case, from 0 to 90 degrees, there will be only 4 levels, so the angle step will be 22 and a half degrees. An advantage of this circuit is that to generate a sine wave, you essentially don't need to store samples in memory in digital form. And if you want to increase the amplitude resolution, you can place two shift registers in series and recalculate the resistors with a step of 11 degrees. But there is also a downside. The frequency of the output signal is 16 times lower than the input clock signal. In the end, I sketched out the following scheme, Arduino Nano, 1602 display, encoder, 74HC595 shift register chip, and 555TL1 Schmidt trigger chip, and a few resistors. Here, from the output, it's necessary to think about the circuit of the output buffer amplifier, with some amplitude adjustment. But we will discuss these issues with you. If the topic interests you and this entire construction takes the form of a printed circuit board and a finished device. This is how it looks on the breadboard. The circuit is very simple and can be assembled in literally 10 to 15 minutes. If you don't have an encoder with a button, you can attach the button separately. We turn on the power and see the theoretical value of the generated frequency on the first line. On the second line, the measured frequency value using the frequency counter. I envision connecting the frequency counter output through a toggle switch, 
which can send a generated output signal to the frequency counter input or a signal from the input terminal to which an external device can be connected to check the frequency. The frequency counter operates on the principle of simultaneously measuring time and the number of pulses. Timer number one is configured to count external pulses with interrupt generation upon comparison with the register. In the interrupt handler, the time since the last interrupt is measured and recorded in a certain variable. Time is measured using the micros command, which has a resolution of four microseconds. Then, in the main program loop, at the moment of screen update, the frequency is calculated based on the number of pulses and the elapsed time. To speed up the frequency counter, the value in the comparison register is decreased if the measurement lasts more than a second. I have set up several values in total, which are cycled through automatically. The frequency counter works up to a little over 5 megahertz, while the generator can output 8 megahertz. But now let's move on to discussing how the frequency is generated and adjusted. There are several generation modes. These include frequency modulation mode and several PWM modes. Let's start with the main mode. A 16 MHz clock signal goes to timer 2, passes through the internal frequency prescaler circuits, and reaches the counter. Each time the counter counts up to the value stored in the comparison register, the output signal on the OC pins changes its state. Thus, we get a frequency divider from 1 to 256. In addition, we can adjust the prescaler to lower the frequency by 8, 32, 64, and so on. Thus, even though the generator can output 8 MHz, the frequency step is uneven. 8, 4, 2, and a half, 2 MHz, and so on. This needs to be taken into account. The PWM signal generation modes differ from each other in frequency. That is, the frequency is adjusted by the prescaler and you change the duty cycle with the knob. Well, the sinusoidal signal is obtained at a frequency 16 times less than the input frequency as I mentioned earlier. At 500 kHz it doesn't turn out very well, but at 250 kHz with a clock of 4 MHz, it turns out fine. The sine wave, of course, is stepped, but everything is easily corrected by adding capacitance. I uploaded the Arduino sketch to GitHub, and anyone interested can download it from there. The control is very simple. In gen mode, that is, generator mode, the output frequency of the square wave signal is set by turning the encoder. Accordingly, if a sine wave is made from it, the frequency is 16 times less. The second line always displays the frequency meter readings. Press the encoder, and PWM1 mode is activated. A PWM signal is output. The duty cycle is set via encoder. Press the encoder to cycle through six more PWM modes. There are seven in total, from PWM1 to PWM7. They differ only in frequency. Then gen mode is activated again. And so it goes in a loop. So, let me demonstrate the generator's operation for you. Currently, we see a square wave output on the oscilloscope. And here are the 8 MHz, which is the maximum the generator can output. However, as I mentioned, the built-in frequency meter cannot display 8 MHz. We set it to 4 and see that it displays 4 correctly, so anything less is also fine. From my point of view, the readings match quite accurately. Here it shows 1,999, while my frequency meter shows 2,000. Well, basically, everything is spot on. The frequency changes. We decrease it, decrease it. Everything is kind of great, everything works. Now let's look at the PWM mode. We turn on PWM1 mode. We see a PWM signal with a frequency of 65 and a half kilohertz. And here, we can actually change its duty cycle, and it changes. I want to point out that the frequency meter, which is currently connected to the output, shows the frequency of the PWM signal. So, you can monitor the frequency of the PWM signal in PWM mode using the frequency meter, provided it is connected to the input. In other words, you are not measuring an external frequency, but directly measuring the frequency from the TTL output. And by changing, switching from one PWM mode to another, only the frequency changes. The duty cycle, in principle, remains fixed when switching between modes.
Now, let's return to the generator mode. Everything works perfectly. Now let's take a look at the sine wave. Turning on the sine wave. This is what a 9 kHz sine wave looks like. Well, let's try increasing the frequency. Here are the maximum 500 kHz. Well, at this point, parasitic capacitances start to affect the smoothing of these amplitude steps. But, in principle, the signal shape is not significantly distorted. All that's left is to develop a simple buffer amplifier with switchable filters that cut off high frequencies, and the generator can be laid out on printed circuit boards. So, friends, I would be glad to hear your comments and suggestions on the circuit, what you would refine and change. I hope the video was interesting and informative for you. If so, don't forget to support it with a like. And you can find all the useful links in the video description. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. This was Andre with you. Goodbye.